Good morning. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you all had a great weekend. I'm Anna Gibbs, and this is your Monday Morning Mojo. I'm so excited to be with you again for another great week, for another great session of Mojo. So if you're there, say hello. It's so good to see. Hi, good morning. It's so good to see everybody. So I am excited to share some thoughts with you this morning um, that will help you grow, that will help you stretch your thinking. Monday Morning Mojo was born uh, out of this feeling of wanting to influence and connect with people, to empower you, to support you, and to get you to think differently so that you can continue to grow professionally and personally and really build your life by design. That's um, why I created this platform and why I thought it was important to do so. And uh, it's just so exciting to see how it's grown over these last uh, three years. I believe that next week will be actually our third year officially, um, uh, our third anniversary, I should say, doing Monday Morning Mojo. And it's just so thrilling. So thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for sharing. I know many of you have helped the community grow. So if you find value in what you hear here every week, Please share it with your friends, invite them to come on and be a part of the Facebook group. Um, you can share the videos. We, we post all the videos of the Monday morning sessions, Monday morning Mojo sessions on my YouTube channel. Um, and you know what, if there's one thing anyone hears that can help you to feel more inspired or to go out and do something creative, to really get more strategic about your goals, to create a new goal, then this is all worth it. And I have to tell you that I learn so much each week because of Monday Morning Mojo. And I am inspired because of it. You know, I'm always looking for content and, and looking for things that I can share, things that I can write about. And so it's a gift for me too. So we're all learning together. And this week, I wanted to focus on our belief system. So I wanna to talk to you today about your beliefs and, and really uh, to ask this question. And so some of you may wanna write things down and here's the question that I'm gonna invite you to write down. Do my beliefs, do my beliefs support what I truly want? Do my beliefs support what I truly want? So, as you examine that and think about that question and ask yourself, you know, what is it that I'm believing about myself? What is it that I'm believing about my ability? What is it that I'm, I'm believing about my opportunities? Um, are they in alignment with what I say I really want? What I say that I want for my career, what I say that I want for my personal life, for my finances, for my relationships, are am I holding on to beliefs that are empowering me or could what I'm believing about myself, about the world, about you fill in the blank, could it actually be holding me back? So let's dive into this because I can't stress enough how your own belief system is, is really creating your reality. Your belief system is creating your reality. And if you're looking to really be successful in, in life, uh, in any area of your life, then we have to examine what we're holding on to. Because our beliefs are the rules we live by. I'll say that again. Our beliefs are the rules we live by. So guys, really, when you think about, right, whatever you hold on to in terms of a belief, is how you start to think and how you start to act. So our beliefs, right, they're made up by our values and they become these rules that we do everything by. So I'll give you an example, silly as it might be. Um, if I believe that wearing my hot pink pants makes me more successful, I'm probably gonna wear those suckers as many times as possible. <laughs> Right. So if my hot pink pants make me successful, I'm going to wear them a lot. And that would would be something that would shape an action. Right. If I believe that sitting on the left side of the room 
is where I find success. It makes me more successful. It makes me lucky, whatever, right? Then what do you think is going to happen as I start to approach a building or an event? I'm going to be uh, thinking about the left side of the room. And when I get in there, I'm going to be scanning for an empty seat on the left side of the room. So that belief that sitting there makes me lucky is going to shape what I'm thinking and it's going to shape what I'm doing. And what I think and what I do is what brings the results. So the result is I'm sitting on the left side of the room. Now, you could say, well, all right, so what's the harm in that? May, may not be, other than the fact that I'm missing the opportunity, in my example, to meet people who are sitting on the right-hand side of the room. Or I'm missing an opportunity to see the room. This is all a metaphor, so follow along with me, to see what the room looks like from the other side. Okay, so are you following? So you could easily convince yourself that whatever you're believing is benign. It's not a big deal. It's, it's, not, it's not harmful. Yet, what do you give up by holding on to that belief? What do you miss out on by holding on to that belief? So our, our beliefs are, again, comprised of our values, comprised of our experiences, and a lot of other things that get us into this, you know, position of saying, this is a rule I live by. And that shapes how we think and how we think becomes what we do and say, right? Because our actions are a reflection of our thoughts. A lot of juicy stuff to write down here. Our, our actions are a reflection of our thoughts. Our thoughts are seeded, S-E-E-D-E-D, -E -E -D, seeded by our beliefs. So our beliefs create our thoughts, our thoughts create our actions. Our actions are what br bring the results, right? Because we can't just think our way into something. We have to do something in order to get a result. So if you want to change the results you're getting in your life, where do you think you need to apply the change? See, most people, when they want something different, uh, when they want different outcomes in any area of their life, right? If you want to lose 10 pounds, the, the first thing that people think about is they're going to change what they're eating. Maybe they're going to change the way they exercise. And, you know, for a very short goal, like, you know, for a short term goal, like five or 10 pounds, you may find that you succeed and you hit the goal by changing what you're doing. However, how many of us find that we find the 10 pounds comes back? And if it's a bigger goal, like losing 50 pounds, just changing what we're doing may not be enough to sustain the outcome because we didn't take a look at our belief system. We have to examine what we believe to be true about ourselves in terms of being thinner or healthier. What do we believe about the food we're putting in our body? What do we believe about nutrition? What do we even believe about how worthy we are to lose the weight in this example? See, our beliefs reflect how we feel about whatever that situation or circumstance is, right? So, so now if I come in a little bit more and say, okay, let's, let's examine what it is that you believe about yourself, right? Well, what, what are you holding on to? What past experience is shaping a belief system right now? Could it be a previous conversation you had even as long as 30, 40 years ago, right? All those things we, we hold on to form a belief system. So if, I don't know, if you were told that, you know, maybe you were told by a friend in school or a teacher that you weren't good at something, you could still be holding on to that. And what is that keeping you from accomplishing, right? Like maybe you were told, you know, you're just not good at math. And so you've determined or you've held on to something subconscious that now says, I'm not good at math, so therefore I can't be good in business, or 
I don't know how to, you know, uh, read financial reports or, you know, all this limiting stuff, right, that starts showing up. So, so these beliefs have to be examined. And when you really get clear about what the inner dialogue is in your head, and you recognize that, that you believe something that, that to be true, that is really limiting you or holding you back, well, your first opportunity is now to do something about it, right? Because you just became aware of it. Awareness is a great gift but now we have to figure out what to do with it. So I think we have positive beliefs that contribute to our success, that contribute to us seeing ourselves in a positive way. We have positive beliefs that we have that help us to see the world in a really positive uh, way, in an empowering way. And then I think that we also hold on to beliefs that just stop us dead in our tracks. Is anybody with me on this? Are you, are you, are you hearing something that you need to hear today? Let me know. You know, so so when we think that we can't do something, when we think that because of a previous experience, a past circumstance, uh, 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 something that maybe we didn't get exposure to limits us, we hold on to that and we believe it to be true. So if you believe that you didn't have the best um, upbringing, you didn't have the best family circumstances, maybe... Uh, you know, there was something that you felt you were missing in your life, and you want to carry that into your formative years and your adult years, it could stop you from believing what's possible. So my point today is, is for you to examine some of the things you're holding on to, and for you to make a decision that it might be time to reframe some thinking, okay? So if we can take a look at the beliefs that we have, and we can decide how many of them are holding us back. And we really get clear about, you know, what is this? Where does it come from, right? That's another important step. So the first step in removing limiting beliefs, the first step is awareness. You have to acknowledge that you have a limiting belief. And my loves, we all do. I do, you do, we all have them because I think that is part of our human existence. And in that part, that enough is okay. But now I think what's not okay is to allow ourselves to hold on to something so tight that we can't take anything else in, right? So it's an opportunity for us to let go of the limiting beliefs that tell us that we can't be good in business or we're not a good parent or we're not, um, you know, capable enough, or we're not successful enough, or thin enough, or oh, blah, 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 right? All those things. And so uh, we have to really take a look at the next thing is, where did this come from? Because if you can identify the root, um, if you can get close enough to the root, then you can really pull it out by the root, right? So it's just like that weed that grows in the garden, right? If we go over to that weed and we want to get rid of it and take a pair of scissors and just cut it at the stem, well, we succeeded temporarily. We may not see it anymore, right? However, because we didn't pull it out by the roots, we know it tends to come back. So this is the, the same thing is true for your beliefs. We've got to pull them out by the root. So if you could really examine, like, where did this come from? Like, where did it really start? Then you can really pull it out by the root. Because if you could look at that same experience differently, and this is what I help uh, a lot of people do in coaching, is to help them reframe their, their belief system. So if you could have a different understanding of the event or experience that created that belief in the first place, then we could allow for that reframing, right? For our brain to have this different thought process around it. And so we, if we change what we believe to be true, we change the way we think about it. And as we change our thoughts, we now have new thoughts that come in that change the things we do. Because remember your thoughts, become your actions. Your actions are a reflection of your thoughts. So I'm talking right to your unconscious mind this morning. Yes, I am. So we want to reframe our thoughts so that we can have different actions. 
so we can do different things so that those thoughts and beliefs don't hold us back or limit us from the actions we need to take that really bring us closer to what we say we want in the first place, right? So, so it's really about following some of these steps. So even if you were a little girl or boy and you were led to believe something about yourself or you were led to believe something about the world, we should be able as adults to challenge any of our thinking, to challenge any of our beliefs. We may find that we still will hold on to some of those beliefs. And if they serve you, if they move you forward in a positive way, if they support the things you say you want, that's awesome. But as you examine them, if there's even one thought or belief that you know is not serving you, today could be your day to start to reframe that thinking. So it's time to let it go, people. It's time to let the baggage down uh, because we're carrying around a lot of heavy stuff. And, and that can cause unnecessary stress, unnecessary anxiety. It can change the way we respond to people. And you know what I'm talking about because if you're holding on to heavy stuff, you know it and you're tired. So let it go. So if we can take a look at if I can break this down for you in a couple more easy steps, really, let's just say you take a few minutes today and examine an area of your life, examine all the different parts of your life, right? We can come back to the wheel of life. I reference this off, often here on uh, Monday Morning Mojo. And if you want to uh, work with the wheel of life tool, it's uh, you can go up to our Facebook page. It's in the files section or send me a message and I'll get it to you. So if you look at all the different areas of your life as displayed on the wheel of life, uh, take an area of your life that you feel maybe you're struggling with right now. It's just not working as well as you'd like it to. Um, and, and write down the beliefs you have about that area of your life, right? Get really honest with yourself. Don't judge it. Don't judge any of it. Just write, just, just allow yourself to free write. What are you believing to be true about that area of your life. So for example, let's say you choose finances and you say that your issue is that you don't have enough money. You don't make enough, you don't have enough, you lack money. Beliefs that could keep you in that situation might sound like this. It's really hard for me to get ahead. Um, it's hard for me to make money. Uh, people in my profession, we don't make as much as people in other professions. Um, the economy is, is bad. Uh, people who have more money, uh, money goes to money. People who have more money are greedy, right? So you get where I'm going with this. So you choose an area of your life that you feel that you're really challenged or struggling with, and you examine your beliefs about that area of your life, and you get as honest with yourself as possible. Okay, no judgment, no one's here with you. You're gonna write it down and then you're gonna just keep digging, right? Just keep digging until you feel like you've really gotten to all of those, those thoughts. So you write down all your limiting beliefs in that area. And then I want you to think of reasons. I want you to examine why you think that way. I want you to think about why you're where you are or or why you're not where you are, however you want to look at that. Uh, and within your belief system, what is true? What is really true? Like, where are the facts, right? So as you start to identify your beliefs, I want you to ask yourself, is this really true? Is this really, really true? This might take a little, a little time um, because, for, for example, if you say, you know, I struggle, I don't have a lot of money. I don't make a lot of money. You have to ask yourself, is it really true? Is it that you don't make a lot of money? Or is it that you don't handle your money well? Is it that you don't make enough money? Or is it that you spend money in places that perhaps right now you shouldn't? So I think we have to get really clear about what is really true. Because for instance, if your expenses are always higher than what you're bringing in, then you have to look at, is there a way I can reduce my expenses? Is there a way I can change what I'm doing? Um, that, and that's just being true. That's not, being, that's not a limiting belief, right? So 
you know, it's, it's about making sure we know that the truth, right, is not positive nor negative. See, sometimes people attach positivity and negativity to the truth. The truth just is, people. It just is. It is what it is. The truth is the truth. And it may not be positive. It may not be negative. It just is. And when you accept what is, then you can figure out what to do with it. So the next thing for us to do is to ask us some questions about, you know, is this always true? And you might identify that it's not. It does, and, and does it always have to be true? May not. Now, if you can come up with a different belief system, if you can come up with, you know, a different thought process around, you know, what really is the challenge for you in this one area of your life, I think you'll start to open yourself up to different possibilities. And as you start to think more of possibilities, you may find some solutions. You might find different outcomes. And if you could reframe your thinking, so whatever that dialogue is that you're playing in your head over and over again, we need to change the story. We need to change the story from what you don't have and what you can't do to what you can do, to what you do have and what you have access to. See, that's another thing that I found in working with people and in leadership and in coaching over the last my gosh, 30 years, is that we tend to put our focus in places that don't serve us. So, so a lot of times people will, will focus on what they don't have, but instead, if we could focus on two things, what we do have, which is where we can build our gratitude, and gratitude is where we vibrate on our highest level. So that opens us up to a lot of opportunity. But the second thing we need to focus on is what do we have access to? Because I, me, myself, would rather have access to more opportunity and resources. I would rather have that be more abundant than the list of what I actually have. Because if I have access to something, if I have an opportunity, if I have resources, right? And what, what are resources? Resources could be people, it could be systems, it could be education, knowledge, right? Well, if I have access to those things, I can create more of what I want, right? So it's about thinking abundantly. This world is full of possibilities for us. It is full of opportunity. If there is anything in your life right now that is not serving you, how can you start to make changes? I, I love this saying about, we're not a tree. We are not a tree. Like we don't have roots so deep that we can't pick up and move around, right? That we can't make changes, that we can't make choices because it is our choices that are creating our life for us. And I know for some of us, depending on where you are right now in your life, you, you may or may not be ready to hear that. So I'll send that out with as much love as I can for you. But my people, your, your life right now is a result of the choices you are making. So if there is an area of your life that is just not serving you, that is not firing in all cylinders, that is not getting you a 10 out of 10 score, if there ever was such a thing, what can you do differently in that area? Even just to move the needle a little bit. We don't have to go from zero to 10 overnight, but can we start to make some changes in how we think and what we believe in and can we start to move the needle just a little bit? Can we start to see progress? Can we allow ourselves to move forward and step out of some of the bondage that we're holding ourselves in? The key to that is to examine what you believe to be true. Examine what you believe to be true about yourself, about your intelligence, your capabilities, about your potential, because it is far greater than you give yourself credit for. We have amazing capacity. There is nothing that you can't do because I believe if you can think it, you have first creation right there. That means it's yours to have. That's right, if you can think it, you've already created it in your mind. That's first creation. Second creation is just putting it into action. So if you have a dream, Pursue it. 
Now, you maybe you don't know what you need to do first, and I get that. So you might need to sit down and, and think about it strategically. You might need to talk to someone and get some support, some help, coaching, consulting, right? But if you have a dream, pursue it. Figure it out because it's yours to have. Don't let a belief come up that says otherwise. And should a belief come up that is holding you back from that dream, You've got to take the time to figure out where is that coming from? Why am I holding on to this belief and how do I reframe it? How do I change what I believe to be true about myself or the situation so I can move past this limitation into action? Because your beliefs are the rules you live by. They shape the thoughts that you're having, which is that 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 little play that is in your head all day where you're the star, right? You're like on stage on this monologue all day. So you have to examine what those thoughts are in your head because those thoughts are creating action. And inaction is an action. Inaction is an action. So if it's holding you back, if it's keeping you from starting or finishing, that's an action. So if we can change what we believe to be true, we can change what we're thinking, then we can change what we're saying and doing. And that's what brings a different result. And so it is about examining ourselves and taking the time to reflect. Um, and it is about progress, not perfection. It is about, I think, I think it's about be, I, this just came to me and I think somebody needs to hear it. So sorry for the pause, but I think it's about spreading more love and starting with ourselves. I think a big part of your success in this process is self-love, is, is realizing that it's okay if you um, understand that you've been holding on to some negative thinking or some limiting beliefs and that now that you're aware of it, you have the potential and the opportunity to do something about it. And that's to be celebrated. So it's not, it's not about judging. It's not about being critical of ourselves. It is about self-love. It is about saying, you know what? This is the one life I get, this one beautiful life. And I'm going to take the, the advantage I have here to make this the best life that I want. The version that is right for myself. So my loves, I hope that this was, I trust that this was exactly what you needed to hear. Um, I believe that someone here is feeling excited and empowered to examine their thinking and their beliefs and making some decisions about the goals that they want to pursue. And that just thrills me to death because every time one of us pursues our dream, we put out this energy into the universe that gives all of us permission to do the same. So we're all in it together. That's the thing. We're all in it together. So energetically, as we move forward, we bring all of us together with us, which is which is beautiful and exciting. So I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me here every week. Uh, next week is Memorial Day weekend. So uh, we will not have a live mojo, but I will see you uh, shortly thereafter. So just uh, stay connected to the Facebook page. That's where I'll share more content and updates with you. I love you. I wish you a powerful day. And I thank you again for joining me. See you very soon.